Hey and welcome to Tutorial to you. My name is Yannick and I hope that you are ready for a heavy C Sharp and ASP.NET Core knowledge boost. Because in this video we are going to explore the repository design pattern in C Sharp, especially for ASP.NET Core MVC applications. Well, chances are that if you have ever created a C-Sharp ASP.NET MVC application that your code looks exactly like this on screen right here. You have a controller for any kind of model that you have. Let's say you have a product controller because you have an application that manages products, whatever that is like shoes or whatever you can really think of, right? So inside of that product controller, you usually have your CRUD operations, something like index to get all the product information add product, update product, delete product, and so on. And well, to be fair enough, for a beginner, this is totally fine. If you have a small application, not much stuff going on, it's okay to put all your CRUD operations in the product controller. It's not a, the baddest practice out there, right? But there is a better practice, and that's important. So right now your application looks like your product controller has the CRUD operations, as you can see it here, index, add, update, and delete, index for sure for getting all the products. And inside of those operations, you directly access the context that you have, your DB context, which is injected inside of your controller. But we will switch over to code just in a second, but let's just continue here. And from that database context inside of your controller, for sure, you directly access the database server. That's what Entity Framework in our case, so the database context is doing by its nature. Now let's discover what is bad about this practice right here. If you add new functionality to your program, chances are that you will have to duplicate your code. And in the end, once you change your data access logic, you will have to, well, rewrite a lot of code, right? So it's easier to say, that we keep our product controller clean and the data accessing happens in another layer. So if we take a look at the repository pattern implementation right here, you can see that we still have the product controller, which includes index, add product, update product and all of that. But inside of all of that operations, we will not directly call our database context. No, instead we will talk to a product repository and that product repository, which we can potentially use in every other controller too, that one will talk to the context. So once we add new functionality, we can simply reuse our product repository, or if we have to adjust our data accessing, we can adjust our product repository and do not have to adjust our product controller. So we add an entire new data access layer, or let's call it like middleman or middleware. So our product controller communicates with the product repository, which changes the actual data inside the context. And that context for sure, again, changes or communicates with the real database SQL server. Now let's see that in action. Before we take a look at the code, please make sure to subscribe to our channel so that you no longer miss any of our upcoming .NET related videos. And if you are a developer interested in C Sharp and you want to land your first job as a developer or really extend your knowledge to earn more money as a developer, check out our C Sharp Progress Academy, which teaches you ASP.NET, Angular, unit testing and C Sharp patterns in depth, helping you to get to the next level as a software engineer. You can find the link in the description below or popping up right now in the top right corner. Alrighty, so here I got an application, .NET 7 ASP.NET MVC. And well, the repository pattern is not implemented yet because this is probably how your application will look like. And I wanna show you how you can add the repository pattern to your application. So here we got a product. It consists out of an ID, name, price. This is our model. I will close that, it's not really important. Here we have the application DB context, which is for sure our application DB context. It may look different for you. It really depends on your application, but chances are that you have a DB context, right? And inside here, you got your DB sets and your products and whatever. So this is like automatically generated if you tick the add identity or authentication checkbox. And inside here, we got a DB set with our products. Okay, nothing more than that. Let me close that. Finally, we got our product controller. And this one is also a very simple controller, MVC controller for, for our product model, right? We get an index view. 
inside here we simply grab all of our products from the context which I'm injecting into the constructor using the dependency injection. So I got that inside of the controller. Okay, the, so this is like the first mismatch in comparison to the repository design pattern, right? We don't want to have the direct context uh, when we apply the repository pattern. So let's keep that in mind. Anyways, in the index view, we return all of our products by directly accessing the context, right? Then we have add product. So we add a new one and we change it, uh, save the changes, right? Then we have update an existing product. Now let's take a look here because that's a little bit more interesting because you will see, a, um, well, the, the main idea why we should use the repository pattern now. Let's just assume that we have any kind of custom logic, right? Now in the real world, things come different as you would expect it. Let's say your customer says, yeah, okay, you can be able or you, you the user should be able to change the name of a product okay so any admin can change the name but you cannot change the price because of why so ever it's just any kind of well business logic from the company product prices cannot change so you cannot simply update the product inside of our uh, context Instead, you have to write down some custom logic. So this is why we grab the product. We cannot simply update it. We grab the product. We check if we have a product. And if we have a product, we only switch the name, but we exclude the price. So this is a custom logic. Now, let's say you add a new controller and that one why so ever again updates the product. In that scenario, you would again have to write down that custom logic and that for sure leads to a lot of mistakes because you don't want to repeat. Maybe you forget about that price business logic. Maybe another developer does not take care of it. So we only want to have one layer which takes care about that specific logic. And that's why we add a repository pattern because the repository will then take care of that data accessing, saving and all of that. So you only have to adjust it or modify it or implement it one single time. Now, finally, if we scroll down, we have the delete product. So just find the product if we have it deleted and all of that. But really, it's not, not about the actual code that you can see here. It's more about the overall implementation of the pattern, which is coming right now. Alrighty, now let's get started implementing the repository pattern. But before we do that, subscribe to our channel because you don't want to miss any upcoming high quality .NET related videos because you are interested in becoming a better C -sharp developer. So subscribe now and never miss out again. Now I want to tell you that a lot of developers create a new project for the data access layer. So this is where you will place your repositories, but you can also simply create a folder and call it repository. So that's what we're going to do now. But in a real world project, you might see an entire project inside of your solution where all of the data accessing is happening. So let's call it repositories. And inside here, we will create an interface. So let's create a new class. It doesn't really matter. We can change it for sure. We can also select interface here and we want to call it I product repository. Now, that interface implements or well lays out the structure for all of our CRUD operations or all custom operations that you want to have or need inside of your repository. So the very first would be like an I enumerable, which returns the products, we we'll call it get all. Now, next up, I will fast forward it because I don't want to bore you too much. I just implement that namespace here. So show potential fixes using tutorials, repository pattern models. So just give me a second. I will build that um, interface right now. Okay, there we go. This should be your default layout inside of a repository interface. So we got one method here, which returns all of the products, all of your models for our case, this is the product now, then we can get one product by ID using the product ID. We can insert, so create a product, right? Insert is creating, so the first CRUD operation. Then we get update, we get delete. All right, so here's your default layout 
for your interface for a repository. We have a method called get all, which returns an IE numberable, which potentially could be a list or an array or whatever, or really a pure IE numberable. Uh, if you don't know about that, we have a video which is popping up right now. It's called IE numberable and I queryable. I really recommend that you watch this video. It's, uh, yeah, it's very interesting and I bet you will learn something new. Next up, we got the get by ID so that we can get a single product by its unique identifier. And then we got our CRUD operations insert for creating, update for updating, delete for delete. And then we got save here. Awesome. So now that we got the interface done, we can now create a class called product repository, which implements the interface. Now in this pattern, we create interfaces because it allows us to have many different implementations of the interface, right? So it really depends on the setup of your project, but well, we want to follow along with the really common practices and that's what you want to do when you implement the repository design pattern. Now inside of our repositories folder, right click and let's add a new class. Let's call it product repository. Now we want to implement our interface. So let's implement the I product repository, which gets auto suggested here. Let's quick fix the implementation. So hover above I product repository, click on show potential fixes and let's say implement interface. Now interface implementations are not optional. So after adding everything, you can see that the error is gone. Here we have our update, save, insert, get by ID, get all and delete. Awesome. Now our product repository should communicate with the DB context, with the database context. So we again need a constructor. So write down CTOR to create a constructor. And inside here, we want to take the DB context that we have. We for sure want to store it. So let's create a private read only application DB context, which is our context again. And we take it from dependency injection. So let's say application db context context now let's assign the value then context equals to context awesome now basically everything we have to do now is to well add the logic which we have inside of the product controller here index add product and all of that we now want to add it to the product repository so let me do that real quick Okay, there we go. So don't care too much about the actual code. It's more about the implementation of the overall pattern and the structure. Okay, so now I'm done with the implementation. Uh, I want to mention that it's not really about the functional code right here. It's more about the pattern implementation and the structure itself. So don't care too much about the real code accessing the data. Now we can delete products we can get all products, context products, right? It's an enumerable. We can get a single product by ID. It's potentially null, so you definitely wanna make a null check or whatever, but that's not too important right now. We can insert products, and then we have a save method to save the changes, and we for sure can update using our custom logic here. Alrighty, so let's save that and go to the product controller. Now, all of our, um, well, I actually result methods here are empty now for sure. And what we want to do is we don't want to use that context here because that's exactly why we have implemented this pattern. We can now remove that, right? That's what you want to achieve. Now it's gone. Perfect. And now we need to find a way to get our repository inside the controller to use it here. And then we have achieved our goal and successfully implemented the repository design pattern because the goal is to get rid of the context the database context inside of your product controller because the controller should not directly access the context. Instead, it should talk to the repository and the repository manages all of the data. Let's go to our program.cs because we now have to, uh, well, make use of dependency injection to inject our product repository. So let's take a look right here. This is where we are configuring services. Here we got the DB context and all of that. So let's start using the builder.services and then we can do like add uh, transient for example of type I product repository and we want to use the class product repository. That's our implementation. There we go. What this does in detail is that transient is the service lifetime where, well, doing one request where for every request, one instance will get created and afterwards we'll get this post. So 
we have three general uh, lifetimes, which is singleton, scoped, and transient. And transient is like that one that has the shortest lifetime, whereas singleton is like shared for every request. But we need to be aware of concurrency and threading issues for edge transient. As I said, it's like we don't have to be worried about multi-threading and all of that. So for now, let's take edge transient here. Let's create again a private read only. Let me zoom in real quick i product repository let's call it product repository i'd like to add an underscore and then inside of the constructor we take the i product repository from the dependency injection it will be the instance let's call it product repository that will get created by the edge transient now let's say product repository equals to product repository there we go we assign the value and now we can finally start using our stuff. So for the index, we want to take the get all, let's say var all products. We can say product repository dot get all. Now let's take a look at the returned value, which is an I enumerable. You can turn it into any collection you like. You can uh, leave it in an, an enumerable or you can turn it into a dot to list to array dictionary and all of that, right? So let's simply set it dot to array just because we can do that. Now let's pass it uh, right here. We will not take a look at it from a visual perspective because it's really just about the code implementation. And now we can continue like that for all of the rest. So if, you if we want to add something, right, we can now say product repository dot insert we just provide the information and there we go it's implemented now what we have to do is we need to save the changes so we need to call save because also saving is now handled by our repository and it's not not automatically implemented inside of our insert we can do that but we can also just create a save method and call it afterwards now for updating exactly the same product repository dot update we provide the new information product and the implementation, our business logic, the very well unique business logic that you will face in nearly every yeah, real world application that you're going to create is now handled by the product repository right here. You know, that crucial part. We don't have to care about that anymore. It doesn't matter where we want to update the product. We can simply call the repository, which takes care of the implementation. I hope you get the point now why this uh, pattern is so famous so popular and why you definitely need to learn about it. So afterwards, again, product repository dot save. And I don't want to continue now because I don't want to bore you as always. We would now call, oh, <laughs> well, to be honest. Okay, so in, in that specific scenario, I want to bore you. We can do that, save, and we're done. Alrighty, now we are done. We can simply provide the product ID here and we're good to go. We have successfully changed our product controller to make use of the product repository pattern. Awesome. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, please give it a thumb up. Please leave your feedback and any wishes for new videos. Leave it down in the comment section below. Subscribe to our channel because you are interested in boosting your C-Sharp skills and make sure to check out our C-Sharp Progress Academy. As I told you earlier, it's the best way to progress as a C-Sharp developer to get to the next level. So thanks for watching and see you next time.